City number seven, right next to Mount Vesuvius. Uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> Nothing, nothing could go wrong at any point, I'm sure. Vatican City, finding a lot of fun city-states right now. I like them a lot. Next up, civil service, then we're gonna go down to divine right. Theocracy and reform church is my eventual goal, but I don't mind going to a tier two government as soon as we can, to be fair. Settlers are only getting 60 gold more expensive each time I buy them. Oh yeah, we're starting to multiply now. We're starting to get somewhere. Do I go straight for banking and get, ba yeah, I'm gonna get banking. Yeah, why not? With this many city states with three envoys in. I, I like this a lot. Another city. It says it's losing loyalty. I don't really believe that. Trade route to Zanzibar for an envoy and 33 gold per route now. I like this. We've got two Sugabas being finished next turn as well and the settlers are still coming. I've got one heading in this direction, one heading down in this direction. I actually think that Magnus probably needs to move now. Where best to send you? I reckon we can get this city growing. Yeah, okay, let's uh, do we send you out to the coast? I could go and settle on the coast of Korea. I could send my settlers out to sea. Maybe I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait and then put Magnus on the coast down here. Yeah, that'll do. So as mentioned before, I don't actually know where the rest of Canada's cities are, but they're not here. They're probably south of Inca. If I just surround this city, the loyalty pressure I can put on it will start to multiply very quickly. I'm going to pop a Sugaba down on this tile and then this tile and then make a nice little holy site triangle. I need to make more holy sites generally. Get my faith up as much as I can because theocracy obviously runs off faith, but we can chop out more Sugabas every turn. Look at this. Beautiful. Oh, it's, it's the extra production my Pantheon gives makes these really quick to build. There's the market in that city. Here is a market in that city. And then we'll save up and next turn we'll get two more traders. There was a moment when I realized that my warrior might be slightly out of date. And that's when I came across two barbarian muskets. Lovely. Civil service. All right, this is something that I can do that will be relatively amusing. Watch this route to Korea, right? 31 gold. First of all, I'm going to buy my worship building, my mosque. That'll increase the gold. Then I'll buy one, two, three flat desert tiles. And then we'll go and make an economic alliance, which gives me extra gold per trade route. And whilst it says 31 gold still, as soon as I send that route out, you can see it's now worth 40 gold per turn. <laughs> Okay, this is truly a crazy trading setting now. Oh my lord, I love it. We can start sending routes to Canada, make you an ally. Let's make you a research ally. I mean, I don't know if that's the best option for me. Who am I trading most with, apart from Korea? Oh, everyone's about the same. Okay, I'll go for a research alliance. No, nope, I'm not asking for God, straight deals. I, that's force of habit. No, all trade deals are absolutely flat. I could make a cultural alliance with Dido. If I knew where her cities were, I might be tempted to do that, you know. Hang on, she's over here. Mm, yeah, cultural alliance isn't gonna be very useful, so I'll go for a religious alliance. Apparently that's what she wants. Military alliance with Portugal. Suddenly we have multilateral alliances. It's all looking lovely. Divine right is looking really tasty because I'm about to go and chop out this wood. It'll give me the temple. That'll give me the boost to that. We'll get a government in. Oh, lovely. And we're ready to get another market in this city, which is pretty cool. Another couple of city states. Yeah, well, lots of city states we're finding on this map so far, which is wonderful. Looks like I'm a little bit bogged here. It's not putting Hunza down as being Suzu. Oh no, it is. This screen is just not caught up for whatever reason. I'm hoping if I get another envoy, that'll just sort itself out, but I'm worried that's bugged. Never mind. Temple. Beautiful. Inca likes the fact that I'm not building on hills or mountains. I quite like, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty flat on desert. Hungary only has a couple of army units, but there is black army, and I have no defenses in my cities. There will come a point where Hungary will probably look to attack me again, and what's going to happen is I'm going to be totally caught by surprise, and I'm going to go, oh no, I should have prepared for this earlier, but I'm, I'm not going to prepare for it. <laughs> My gold is too better spent on other things, such as mass expansion. Here's monarchy. Right, land surveyors, good. Serfdom, good. Caravassonaries, that is quite useful. I'm actually going to put land surveyors away. Let's put Republican legacy in, keep the gold card. Then I'm going to put in defensive buildings. Veterancy might help because encampments, harbors, you never know when that sort of thing will be handy. 38 gold per turn. Oh, we need to do so much more exploring. City number nine, an access to the coast. Immediately, Magnus is going to be pulled across, I think. Does it make sense to build another settler? No, not from that city. So yeah, Magnus will pull across just to give this a little bit of loyalty and we'll start to cut out another Sugaba. Oh, the forbidden trade. Tea for coffee. Oh no, where are my British instincts? What's gone wrong? It's turn 138. Why has Yongle got aluminium? <laughs> What? 
Oh no, this is not the time, Elizabeth. I'm having a crisis. What are you doing, Yong Lei? 245. Oh my lord, they're on 43 techs. Korea, the science captain, is on 34. I'm on 23. So I'm 20 techs behind at the moment. Oh my lord. We are going to have to absolutely pull ourselves back into this game in the most crazy way we've ever seen. Well, at least I can get a trade agreement with England. That's fun. Let's do that. See if this loyalty pressure makes a difference. It's minus three at the moment, but if I chop out a pro uh, population in this city. Does that make a difference? Minus two. Yeah, that does make a difference. Look at that. This Canadian city was on 1.4 loyalty positive, but watch this as I start to just inflate the cities around. So we're going to start doing things like chopping out bananas in rainforests, and you can see the population now increasing. That's going to really, really put a negative effect on them. And look at this. It's starting to get settlers out from the coast now. We are already on 10 cities, but there's an 11th settler. Here is a 12th. I wanted to get to 20. I reckon we can do that this era. We'll get the base to expand massively. Oh, and there we go. Guilds has just unlocked banking for me in the same turn. Do I want town charters? Do we want more gold from trade routes or do we want more gold from the Sugaba? I think I'm going to go for trade routes just out of, uh, sorry, the, the Sugaba from theming, but it's it's all kind of a much of a muchness, really. I don't really mind. So now we go theocracy. So I think banks are going to be worth quite a lot of gold. 13 gold per turn and more merchant points. Yeah, these are pretty good now. I might save up and start getting them with faith? I, I don't know about that. Maybe it's something we get once we've run out of monumentality. Hmm. It's always a funny upgrade, that one. I never know quite where to put it in my path. Pingala's finally got researcher, though. We've got a little bit of science coming in per turn. Just a little bit. 55. Nowhere near as much as we need. What did I say about population? Minus 4.6 now. Yeah, Canada's going to lose Toronto. That'd be a nice pickup for me. It'll just unify all of the lands I have in this area. I don't know why they chose to settle that city. Bit of a mystery. Candy has bowed to me. Really? Yeah, no, I have. What's going on there? I did a quest for them. I don't know what quest I did for them. Oh, an industrial zone. Yeah, this screen, I don't know what's going on with this screen at the moment. It is totally bugged. I'm going to save and reload and see if that helps. Yeah, there we go. It sorted itself out. I can see everything now. Candy's really, really handy because as I discover more of the map, I'll find more natural wonders. And if I do that, I'll get relics. So that's awesome. Oh, I see random deserts with pyramids in and I, uh, I get excited. Totally accidentally, I can build Great Zimbabwe in this city. That's mad. Trade routes from this city gain two gold, every bonus resource within three tiles of the city and in the city's territory. Well, I don't have many bonus resources to be fair. It's only, oh, two. One, two, yeah, that's it. But hey, four gold per turn extra. <laughs> that's not bad. And you know what? I think I will buy a bank in my best cities, especially in my capital because I get double great people points. I may get the economics boost. I won't build too many more banks after that point. We're going to save my gold for actual trade routes and settlers and all that sort of thing. But worth a little bit. Worth a little bit. Magnus is ready. And we've got a good chop on that Sogaba. And most importantly, settlers can start. Oh, actually, I need to finish that Sogaba. Oh, almost wasted some gold there. 20% gold on a settler. That's, that's worth a lot when the settlers have such a high base cost. Merchant, trade routes to my own cities. Eh, that one's less important. But the extra envoy I get, at least that is quite useful. I do like Mexico City because this will make things like my industrial zones and, and, and uh, entertainment complexes, all that sort of stuff work harder. Plus, it's a little bit more of the map in the north. My 11th city, Timbuktu. Hungary keeps denouncing me. They are desperate to be my bitter rival this entire game. They haven't quite forgiven me for raising their city. I do enjoy that, though. Everyone else loves me. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the world. They're a big fan of me. My 800 gold per turn is still world leading. Even Yong Lei with his crazy bonuses is only getting 400. What's Portugal getting? 100. England, 300. Dido, 100. Ah, no one can beat me and my desert gold. It's wonderful. And here's Reformed Church. 15% extra discount purchase on settlers is a huge deal. That's what my government looks like, by the way. And if I chop out this Sugaba, you can see briefly what I'm talking about. A settler is 460 gold, which means that a settler should also be about 380 faith. But no, we've now gone down to 265. That's so good. Sprawling Empire. I, I feel better when I see Sprawling Empire because normally it means for once things are starting to sort of go my way. <laughs> There's the market. Let's start pumping settlers out. We still have some trade routes in this city available. I'm going to get one of my unique units as well. It gives me four era score. It's quite quick and I'm going to charge it into Korea because they have six cities and I can only see four of them. And Korea is my economic ally. So I really want to find where they all are. And another market there. Oh, which means I can get another trader. Even better. Even better. Yep, we 
are running low on trade routes now. It's a good thing I made one more scouting unit. Oh, I've only got one route left in Gao. We're down to minus six in this Canadian city. I like that. It's quite fun. Got some spare tea. I'm waiting for somebody else to find another luxury. We already have 15 of them, so I'm kind of already at the edge of what I think the game is going to give me in terms of luxuries, which is a bit of a shame. What can you do? Cartography. I need cartography because I tell you what, my settlers are struggling to get out into the world at the moment. We're managing it to a small extent, but yeah, settler spam only works when there's places to settle. That's the, that's the usual thing. Does Canada have their own religion? No, they don't. Okay, converting them to mine won't hit their loyalty. That would have been relatively amusing. This is very much something to give me a bit of a head scratch. Diplomatic League is making my envoys work much harder. Double thirst envoy means that I can spread the few I've got amongst a lot of different city-states. I like it. But Visselbanken, well, Visselbanken works really well when you have so many trade routes to Korea, to city-states. We're not really about food and production, to be honest with you, but we could be. I won't use it for now, but I am very tempted. Uh, we do now have a spy, though. Spies are probably one of the most important things we could get. I think I'm going to make my banks as effective as possible, though. Four gold for every bank? Well, yep, that's going to start adding up really quickly. Look how many settlers I've got. <laughs> They're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. Spain is going to hate this. Spain Spain hates this one settler trick. I've got five of them in this little uh, sea here. And oh, I tell you what, these settlers, these gold routes, I'm just not going to run out. Normally, most civs get to the point where you put about 15, 20 cities up and the cost of settlers gets so extreme that you can't really settle beyond. But we're not going to hit that cap until probably we get to about 30, 35 cities, as long as we can pump them out in the Renaissance era. After that, it will switch and then we'll move, you know, we'll use our gold for other stuff. So I've played thousands and thousands of hours of Civ 6 and I've never actually stopped to read about why triangular trade is actually called triangular trade. It's literally because routes would hit three points rather than going from point A to point B. They'd go A, B, C, A, B, C and just keep shipping whatever the next place needed to it. It's absolutely logical when you think about it. But then why don't we have square trade or penta trade or hexa trade? I mean, there's so many better trades we could have. Why did we stop at triangles? Oh, I just feel like we didn't have enough ambition when it came to shapes. Buenos Aires, I love you, but your muskets are being very annoying. I would like to settle this land, please. Thank you. Every time I find a city, that's another trade route that my trade empire can send out. I'm, I'm relieved. Next up, well, I've got to have Reina. I'm going to put Reina in my trade capital. Now, she's not ideal, but what she does do is let me progress into the fourth and fifth rings of tiles faster. Gives me more commercial hub adjacency. Gold per citizen. Allows me to purchase districts with gold, I think this is going to be a very, very good acquisition for me. An enemy spy succeeded in siphoning 5,000 gold from my trade capital. Ah, yes. Marley. Now I remember. <laughs> Okay, this is fine because what I could do is switch my idea around and just put Amani into the city. Uh, she would stop the city from getting spied on pretty much fully. I would like fewer grievances. Oh, no, actually, no, we want Hungary, who is hated by the world, to have double. I'd like to culture bomb so I can steal towels from Hungary. That'd be funny. I'm going to put five votes on each, which is 200 favor. If there's any ties, hopefully I'll just push it in one direction or another. And yes, we won both. There you go. Lovely. Oh, yeah, no, spies are now draining pretty much all of my gold. All of it. Right. But we, we've got a problem. <laughs> we've, we've got a big problem. So capital. Do we want to go? Now, this is the question. We could go intelligence agency. It gives me a three spy, gives me a better chance of counter spying, but then it doesn't let me have Grandmaster's Chapel. And Grandmaster's Chapel, with the extra faith income and faith discounting, could be good if I ever wanted to make any domination plays on this continent later into the game. Taking over Hungary with a Golden Age war? That's not a bad idea. And Grandmaster's Chapel very much help me with that. I'm just going to build out the spy for now and Amani, I'm going to probably lose Singapore which is a bit annoying but never mind. Did I lose Singapore? No I didn't lose Singapore. Hey that's still my friend. Excellent. And instead I'm going to put Reina because her ability is trade routes to go through cities. I'm going to put her in this city because I've got pretty much every Korean route and every city state route to the north. I think they go through that path. Oh no. Some of them go through this path. Ah that's annoying. All right well we'll see if we can find a better place for those routes to go. Maybe it's uh, another one of my own cities. 
is I'm not sure. My capital, this city? My trade routes are chaos, but that's just something that happens when you have so many, you know? You just have to accept that they're just gonna go a bit weird at some point. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had a change of heart yet again. I'm not gonna build a spy. I'm not gonna build Grandmaster's Chapel. I'm gonna build Intelligence Agency. Now, my reasoning is this. I do have faith income and I will have a faith discount, but it's my gold. My gold is the big one for army, so I can deal without the Grandmaster's Chapel. Instead, keeping my economic hub safe, that's a really big one, and then using a spy to steal Yonglei's science. That could be absolutely critical, especially if I can get all the way over to, where are you, nuclear program. Spies who steal a boost gain two boosts, not one. Now that's the sort of thing I think I can do. That's the sort of thing that should be a lot of fun. This will be a good representation of how badly spies are currently affecting my economy. Look at this, we should go from 82 gold to 1,082 gold, very roughly. 434, so we're not getting any of the gold from this city at the moment. <laughs> Oh no. Yep, capital. I'm going to need you to, to finish this building fast. Go chop these woods out. I, I do not have time to wait. Oh, two extra envoys. Well, go on then. That's fun. Bandar Brunei. We'll take that city state over. That gives me <laughs> three gold per turn. This ability, trading posts in foreign cities provide one gold to trade routes passing through them. This has to be the worst ability in the world. <laughs> I've never seen a game where that is actually useful. We'll take Vatican over instead. More era score more faith, more juicy loveliness. I apologize, Spain. You are not going to like me doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, Spain asked me not to settle near them, as did Georgia. I'm ignoring both of them. <laughs> Just ignoring both of them. That's the sort of decision that will never come back to haunt you ever, no matter what anyone says. Um, I could put the sugar bar on the river there, which would probably be the better idea, but I'm going to put it up here because we're going to get a nice holy site adjacency between two sugar bars. If I set up something that looks a little bit like this. Maybe. Buenos Aires would be a pretty decent pickup for me because bonus resources behaving like amenities? Well, yes. In short, that would be that would be very, very handy. Big old desert, this one. Nazca. Oh, Spain, what have you done? I've just noticed that. Oh, look at what I could have created in my Petra city. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah, we're gonna see a lot of people start stealing a lot of gold. We're, we're working on the spy, we're working on the spy. We've only had it a few turns, to be honest. Machiavellianism would help if I had anywhere actually building a spy. Is it worth just raw building? Yeah, it probably is actually. First envoy counts as two. Are we going to put that anywhere for now? No. Buenos Aires, bam, a little bit more happiness. Convert over to Machiavellianism. Switch this city to spy, 10 turns. We're, we're doing it, we're going as fast as we can. Funny, isn't it? I've been keeping that. Did anyone see? Let me know in the comments because I totally forgot to check. Did anyone see who got the 5,000 gold? We can work out who it is spying on us and uh, definitely keep them in mind. Not that I would keep a revenge list, but that is exactly what I would do. I would I would absolutely keep a revenge list. This is city 15. It's a handsome looking city. More trade routes. That's what it represents. Oh, another luxury there as well. Excellent. Even better. Another luxury over here, although I'm going to chop the woods out first. Oh, just so good. So quick with my pantheon. This is where the pantheon is paying off. Not a big beginning of the game. It's not a pantheon that starts a snowball. It is the snowball. You've got to wait for it, but once it starts going, oh yeah. Markets are worth 10 gold. I like that. That's fun. Although we've now run out of gold routes. Oh no, we need to find new cities, new places to settle, not even settle, new places to trade with. Where are we going to find them? What can we do? Maybe send a unit down past Zanzibar? Hungary won't open its borders to me, which is really annoying because they've limited the number of cities I can see. There's two more cities hidden here somewhere. Inca is probably somewhere that we could go though. Good, I have your open borders, thank you. Oh, Toronto finally flipped as well. Hey, that's awesome. Another city over there, another luxury over here. These are all luxuries we haven't got. So somehow we're actually staying happy right now, which is pretty unbelievable. And cartography, our settlers can now go into ocean tiles. That is a very, very long awaited upgrade. We love it. We only deal with those who have something to offer like you, for instance, Yonglei. Why do I feel like you're stealing my gold? <laughs> Why do I feel like you're stealing my gold? My people are lazy and unworthy. Yeah, we can't produce anything. Meanwhile, a thousand gold per turn. So, Spain, what are you producing? Uh, minus question mark. Ooh, that's a healthy number. <laughs> Means they're bankrupt. So, I think they're just flinging stones. They're just, they're just upset. They're annoyed. Oh, I need, I need a spy. This hemorrhaging of gold. I've probably lost about 10 turns or so. It is rather frustrating, but oh, intelligence agency has now been almost chopped out, which is great. Oh, 
are perfect. We found one more city on the coast and I can trade with that. Every time we do that, I just, there's a little bit of relief. I'm like, whew. And I know, I know I'm losing the gold from that city, so it doesn't matter right now, but it's, it's, you'll just see. You'll see. It'll all come back, especially with this intelligence agency. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I had a settler literally about to settle and a storm appeared on that tile and killed it. Oh my lord, the perils of exploration, eh? That's terrifying. Oh man. Well, I'm gonna just have to send another settler over there, but that's, I feel that's harsh. I was just about to go and get some salt, which I didn't have. Can I feel salty about this? What is it about this game? This run? It's been horrible. It's been absolutely horrible. Ah, uh, what can you do, I guess? Still producing markets, chopping out things like monuments. Still sending new routes. Yeah, look at that. Just hugging around that area. And oh, Inca, you're not going to be able to settle there. It doesn't matter how much musket you're packing on that tile. And that's a lot of musket you're packing on that tile. It's not going to help. This spy will, though. Three turns. Oh, why does it take that long? Other cities within nine tiles and not owned by me lose loyalty. Hungary will find that very annoying. But we're only one promotion away now. One promotion away. And that city will be safe from spies. Hopefully. Rumor has it that Spain has been targeted by Chinguetti. Oh my lord, if that city state exists. Yes, that's what I want to find. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Spain, it's going to be around Spain somewhere. Please, please let me find that city state. That's huge. Fez, Fez is less important. Faith on every trade route. I've currently got seven religious followers in this city. That would mean that I would have seven faith times 17. <laughs> It would more than double my faith per turn. I also want Kamasi. Neither of them have existed so far. Look at how many culture city states I've found. Not one Kamasi. Or oh, another city. Can I trade with that? Please let me trade with that. Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, you fool, Hungary. You fool. Don't leave me a city like that. I'm briefly going to swap town charters out for trade confederation because extra science and culture on my trade routes. Yeah, that's, that's massively helping now. Now that I've got 16, 17 routes up, grants three envoys at this city state. Oh. Oh, this could be a good way of bringing Cahokia or Jerusalem on side. Jerusalem would help me to spread my own religion. Cahokia helps me with my <laughs> crippling happiness problem. It's not really crippling. It's it's barely, barely a problem, but that would be a good thing to put on my desert tiles as well. So that's probably where I'm going to be going. Oh yeah, look at that. Almost 1,200 gold per turn, which would be even better if I got to keep any of it, but I don't. Two spies randomly escaped from my city. Does that mean they failed? I think that means they failed to steal the gold. Now, there's probably going to be 172 spies in this one city, so I'm not expecting to get all of my gold, but if I get at any turn, any turn at all, where I get my full gold from Gao, then that would be a huge thing. By the way, this is always one of the problems I've had with Mali over somebody like England. Nope, we didn't get our gold. Is that it's just so susceptible to spies, because you can't spy on harbours. So Portugal, England, they just seem to have such an advantage. Anyway, look, counter-spying. We've got a spy in now. Here's my second spy. Oh, over you come. We just need to get one more governor title and we'll have it. Oh, a trade route finished to Jerusalem. And now I can use Jerusalem as a port. Look at all these cities that have appeared. Oh, I have essentially endless routes now. That is so much better. That makes me feel better about all the markets I just built. All right, trader, trader. Let's start just pumping these traders out now. One for one trading, open borders trading. This is the sort of thing that's allowable. Cahokia, can I borrow you? Oh, yes, I can. And I spread my religion doing so as well. It means I can put mounds down in this city, which would be very, very handy. Now, I think I can only put one mound down per city with a benefit until I get natural history and cultural heritage. Yeah, okay, still useful. Is Georgia a good candidate for a cultural alliance? Hmm, maybe, maybe. It means I can settle this island unopposed and it means I can settle around them? I don't know. It's probably not worth it, but it's the sort of thing I'm definitely keeping an eye out for. I've still got serfdom in. I'm still settling like crazy. This is my 17th city now. Magnus, make your way further down. Oh, the, the lack of gold, the gold being stolen from me right now has really crippled my expansion. It's probably taken my expectations down from about 25 cities to about 20 in this era, which is ridiculous when you think about it. But never mind the mounds. There we go. This city is now ecstatic, which means it's getting full benefits from everything. Imagine if I'd gone owls. Imagine how many extra envoys I'd be getting from all this. Oh, no, we don't have that mode turned on. This is... uh supposed to be difficult. It has been difficult to be fair. Enemy spy captured. Yes. 
Oh, thank goodness, we caught one. We caught one. Now, should we have a guess where it's from? I reckon it'll be Yonglei. England and Spain. Oh, ho, 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 ho. dear, oh, dear. How cheeky. Actually, that wasn't my spy that caught it. That was just my native defenses. Okay. Hey, don't complain. Next person is to Holy Site because it's next to my commercial hub. We're not getting our gold yet. We need to keep on doing this, but this is a good start. More settlements. More Sogobas. Civil engineering and that theatre square actually was the boost. What theatre square, you ask? Toronto's theatre square, which has now rebelled to me. Oh, all of this extra era score is delightful. Right, public works, pop it back in. Spies, don't need that card in anymore. Spy operations take less time. It's not very useful if you're counter-spying. Let me tell you, this will bank in this vote because I'm still building this wonder. Great Zimbabwe, I reckon we can build it just a little quicker now. Especially because these mounds, oh, they just keep giving housing, keep giving food. Oh, I lost another settler going in this direction. Oh, this is for... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll go and claim it back. Uh, gold to recover a settler. Oh, this is a young... Right, this is a unique Indonesian boat. Let's go find it. There you are. There you are, you little cheeky thing. I'm gonna steal you back. Next up, I'm unlocking water parks. I want every city to be ecstatic if possible. Just heading up the top of the tree now. Industrialization... The uh, uh, reason I'm so excited about all this is Mexico City is still on side. So factories, entertainment complexes, water parks, all of these things are very effective once I hit zoos, aquariums, and all the fun stuff. Amani, enemy spies operate at three levels below normal in this city. Go on then, bring it on, world. <laughs> <laughs> I will collect every spy I can. I will, you know what, how many can I get? Can I get like 10 spies? That's going to be the, the aim of this playthrough, the sort of little sub-aim. How many spies can I collect? I think I just got full gold. I think I just got full, oh my goodness, I think I just got full gold, everyone. I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. Well, there's my settler, and from memory, I can actually use Yongs to, yeah, then move it. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Just spamming settlers in the last few turns of monumentality. I'll still be able to buy settlers later on. It's just they're not going to be quite as good. So that's why I'm getting it all out of my system now. Oh, I got so excited. I was like, religious city-state on the borders of Spain? It's got a bit... No, it's Yerevan. Yerevan's still good, but it's not what I'm after. I think this is city number 20. So we've effectively now done it. I've still got a bunch of settlers. One, two, and I'm still producing one every day. So maybe the 25 I said wasn't as far out as I may be worried it would be, but I know, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm very happy with how this has gone. I wish Hungary would get over their problems and be my ally, because my word, that would be a very beneficial ally for me to have. But no worries, I'm gonna switch to Research Alliance with Korea, because I really could use the extra faith, and by faith I mean science, of course. Military Alliance with Canada, the greatest war hawk in the world. Religious is just kind of a naff one, but I, I like that, and I do like the idea of going for an economic alliance with Portugal, because once I do start trading with Portugal, they'll start trading back. They cannot help themselves. They love the money. I still have my cultural alliance in reserve. I don't know what I'm going to use it for just yet, but I'll find something. Is this a new continent to settle on? You better believe it is. With some salt. Oh, we're still almost happy in every city. We've managed to really monopolize like every single type of resource on this map. It's brilliant. This will be another Sugaba. There is another settler and another market, which you know what that means. It means more trade routes. Oh, actually, look, there's another one. Another market, another trade route. 48 tax. Yonglei must be getting fairly close to a spaceport. They have rocketry. Yeah, it's a little bit concerning. It's like I'm playing with Deity++ plus plus Roman Holiday. I'm not. This is just regular deity, but what we said for ages, AI has potential with Yonglei. I really do think. We just haven't seen it pop off yet, but maybe this is the day. Plus one trade route capacity. That's awesome, but I think we worked out that all trade routes in this city are now going to get a bonus for gold. That's the sort of multi Multiplier that adds up really, really nicely. Oh yeah, we're up to almost 50 gold roots now. This is very, very cool. I'm just focusing on the Vissel Bank and roots to make sure this city's got a lot of production. Well, unfortunately, that is all of the super cheap settlers we're ever going to build. So we've got two, another one there. So three settlers plus my 21 cities. Oh no, four settlers. So we will get to 25 cities. I think we're gonna just keep trying to expand, but monumentality, it was the run. I enjoyed it, but it is now finally come to a close. Oh, Spain's not very happy. So many minus sixes.
choices we have in our relationship. What, what's going on? No idea. Maybe it's just the repeated settling near them. It could be that, to be fair. That's, I would be repeatedly annoyed if someone had just moved across the map like this just to settle near them. They made a clear on me here. I don't have much in the way of a defense. When you have 1,500 gold per turn, you don't necessarily worry about not having a defense, but it is something I should think about. Do I want extra population and naval movement, or do I want three gold per specialty district in the front? Yeah, I mean, it's... <laughs> It's not even, it's not even a question. I'm on 1,500, now I'm on 1,700, and my traders can no longer get pillaged. I mean, that in itself is, is just wonderful. There's a route to Jerusalem, and let me just put one envoy in them, and I have now suzerained them as well. Now that I've lost the monumentality discount, ah, uh, 2,400 gold on a settler. The irony is I can still buy one of these every other turn. That is awesome. That is awesome. I'm wondering, do I I save my gold until I get to democracy and the 15% discount. I don't think it's worth it. I think I might just spend a few turns using my gold on actual infrastructure. This might be the opportunity to go around and build all of these 17 gold banks that have been tempting me for so long. I might, yeah, I'm just going to spend a few turns. I can build two banks every turn and as I do my gold's just going to go up and up and up and my merchant will go up as well. And there's another spy captured. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of this now. Come and see my menagerie. We have Kendall, Pepe, and Vivian. <laughs> All three of those are just the most hilarious spy names. I love the idea of a spy coming along called Vivian. I don't know why. And Pepe. Oh no, it's Pepe. 21 gold on banks now. Huh, oh, that changed at some point. Yeah, my gold is starting to multiply. We've industrialized. Never before have I been so excited to get sooty. So we can put coal power plants down now, provided we have coal, which considering how much land we have, seeing only one notification of coal is a little bit worrying. Where is it? Accessible, but barely. All right, right. Well, well, we'll get back to that in a second. One thing I did just want to do quickly is pick up an archaeological museum because then natural history finishes, which is wonderful. I didn't want to have to work that for any longer than I needed. Visselbanken is fun. I'm going to put Diplomatic League in briefly. I do mean briefly because we've built up four envoys now. So I'm just going to go along and say Mogadishu, absolutely. Yerevan, Kaguana, and Auckland. Actually, we're going to not put it in Kaguana. We're going to put it into Cardiff. All of these city-states will have have two envoys and we'll do something quick to just reset my culture. There you go. Enlightenment will do. And then I'll put this bank and back in. But in the meantime, oh, next turn. Next turn we'll pick up factory. That'll be cool. Well, now that we have industrialized, what do we do? I'm tempted to go straight for electricity and seaports, but railroad, that is very important because that means we can actually make our trade routes better. If we put railroad down along the lines that all the routes are taking, like up here, for instance, then we get a lot more gold per turn. I very rarely use railroads above, well, let's be honest, Civ 6 Railway Maker memes. And whilst I stand by that every single game as being amazing, I can actually use them for their genuine purpose, which is to increase gold on trade routes, which when you've got 2,000 gold coming in and you've got 24 routes going, that could be quite useful. John Jacob Astor. Two more envoys. I'd love that. Spillsbury with toys as well. I'd love toys. It's all good. Oh, I keep forgetting the, the religion bomb. Okay, it's annoying for hungry, but I really should be spreading my religion to some of my other cities. Oh, Signy, does that mean I get a relic? I got a relic. Amazing. Oh, and there's some coal. <laughs> I was literally just about to go and chop that down. Oh, thank goodness. We actually have two sources of coal. I thought we only have the one. Okay, then. Well, there's no point hanging around. Let's get that factory built and the coal power plant built as well. We can switch back to Visselbanken. So we'll just help this city to become a powerhouse again. 1,300 gold per turn. We can get that higher. Mogadishu gives more gold to banks, but most importantly, now that we've industrialized, watch what Auckland does. Da -da! Oh yeah, we've got actual production at sea. All of our island nations, and we have a lot of island nations. These are all suddenly coming online. More trade routes, you say? Oh, go on then. So Canada is stuck down to the south of Inca. So they really did settle randomly for Toronto. I feel bad for them. They had ambitions. They were going to do what we were going to do and spread wide, very wide, and they just mucked it up. Bit of an update with where everyone one is compared to me because we're still very far behind Yongle on both culture and science, but we have other resources.
resources, economy, cities, and population. So we're on 22 cities and 112 population. This is what everyone else is on. 8 and 55, 6 and 43, 6 and 45, 8 and 63, 10 and 72, 7 and 71, 12 and 76, 103 population for Yongle, only 9 cities though, 7 and 33, and 11 and 99. England randomly powerhousing it. The reason I mention it is I've just taken over the score lead. So my empire is now effectively better than Yongle's, but it's this tree. This is what I'm worried about. 49 techs to my 31. I'm no longer last, but if we look five techs ahead, we only get to Spain, who is in sixth. So there's a lot to do. I mean, I've missed a couple of techs that are easy, but not many. I mean, I don't necessarily have plans to go for a science victory, but I also don't have plans at this stage for any victory, which is a bit of a problem in itself. Uh-oh. I feared this day might come. I very much feared this day might come. Done the damage yet? No. Which way is it going? Southwest? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Southwest is where I am. Can you go any other direction, please? Please. This is city number 23 and it's next to Singi. Steam power. All I need is an encampment and military engineers and coal and basically everything. <laughs> When you put it like that, it's not enough. It's not not a lot, really, not enough. Yes, that's absolutely what it is, it's not enough. You know what, there's actually quite a few trade routes I can do with Inca now, so I'll offer them the Cultural Alliance. I'm sort of just saving it, but looking at it, I don't really see the point. Oh, that just every time someone brings up another luxury, I'm like, please, trade with me. I have a huge empire and it's very unhappy. It's not unhappy, it's actually quite happy, but I can claim it's unhappy and elicit sympathy from people. I tell you what, this Auckland Scout is just stood on this tribal village and it will not move. Like, move. I do not want to have to le levy your entire military just to move you. But I will. I absolutely will do it. I'm like that. Some would say unhinged. I would say disciplined and also unhinged. Oh, this, every time I see this, I, 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 as I say, if you didn't see the first episode of this series, I am not trading with AI other than just one-on-one -on -one trades this game, just to practice. A little bit of internal empire management. But every time I see this, I just want to go, please. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zursa, Zaf, Barnaby Rex, Sharky Bates, Charlie Bears, I love you Tombo, Flying Dutch Burbs. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye.